unique self is the essential portal, the essential opening, the essential technology for what I've called the democratization of enlightenment. Democratization of enlightenment is a term that I first began deploying in my doctoral studies at Oxford, you know, almost a decade ago. And it's become an essential dimension of world spirituality teaching. And the democratization of enlightenment doesn't mean that everyone is enlightened in an equal way. It means that the possibility of enlightenment is what William James called a genuine option for every human being who aspires to it. It means that enlightenment is not only the province of the elite. It means that enlightenment can expand beyond the narrow sectors of the meditation hall in Nepal or in Brooklyn or the back streets of Jerusalem's ultra-Orthodox neighborhoods where the pious Kabbalists sit and chant. It means that enlightenment becomes part of the potential fabric of every awakened life. But that's a big deal because where we are in the world today is at a place where there's such a crisis, a crisis of resources, right? A, a, a crisis of meaning, right? A crisis of direction, right? A crisis of hunger, right? A crisis of imagination, which threaten literally the survival of the planet, of Earth, right? Of this epoch of humanity as we know it. And it, it's oft said and correctly said that a, a, a set of problems, a set of issues, a set of challenges created at one level of consciousness can only be solved at a higher level of consciousness. Now, generally, we understand that's true about the individual. The individual who creates a set of problems at one level of consciousness needs to evolve to a higher level of consciousness to solve those challenges and problems. But now that's true, now we understand that's true, not merely of the individual, but it's true of the community. It's true of the, the public culture. It's true of the we space. Planet Earth has become a we space. You go onto Google Earth, there's no place in the world you can't see today. The world's getting smaller and smaller. We affect each other. We're completely interdependent and interpenetrated. The old teaching of the Enlightenment teachers of the interconnectivity of the all with the all is no longer something that you realize in meditation or in chant. It's actually an obvious truth of reality. So track that with me. The esoteric truth of the interconnectivity of the all with the all a thousand years ago has now become the obvious truth of interconnectivity, which is made complete evident day after day in the fabric of our lives. So to solve the radical problem challenge of today, we need to up-level our consciousness as a community. We need to up-level the consciousness of our we space. And we can only do that in an internet intertwined world where millions and millions and billions of people affect the we space. The only way we can up-level consciousness is to begin to speak of, to, give, to begin to enact the possibility of the democratization of enlightenment. To make enlightenment in the social mind and the public culture, right, a genuine psychological, spiritual possibility. Again, that doesn't mean that everyone's enlightened at the same level. It means that the possibility of enlightenment awakens. Now, why is unique self important in that sense? And it's important for, for a number of reasons. Number one, uniqueness is, the notion of unique self is the ultimate democratic principle. Our unique selves are all different. They're unique by their very nature. And everybody's got one. Just like one person, one vote, one person, one potentially enacted unique self. And that calls a person in an entirely different way. When I realize that I'm called to my unique self enlightenment, which is to awaken to my unique self, I begin to awaken, I begin to become enlivened, I begin to become aware in an entirely different way than if, like it was in the old enlightenment teachings, I'm called to experience myself as pure consciousness, 
right? The call to experience myself as pure consciousness doesn't address most of humanity because most of humanity is looking intuitively and correctly to feel how can I enact the unique meaning of my life. Now, if I do that in a narcissistic way, then I'm, I'm lost in an ego and separate self. I'm alienated. But if I do that in a healthy, awake, alive, aware way, then I want to be part of all that is and as part of all that is to express my unique essence and unique gifts. So uniqueness opens the portal of enlightenment right, to the larger population because uniqueness, by definition, is a democratized concept. That's number one. Number two, and no less important, is that as long as you're talking about a kind of narrow, true self-enlightenment, most people feel excluded from it. It's not relevant to them. Right? When you begin to talk about a unique self-enlightenment, people awaken to the very conversation. The conversation becomes interesting. And once the enlightenment conversation attracts attention, once it grabs the heart the way it always does, then you can begin to explain in a whole different way that if you want to realize your unique self, you, you've got to evolve beyond the consciousness of ego. You've got to evolve beyond exclusive identification with ego because ego grasps and distorts your unique self. Ego seeks to feed itself, right, to satisfy itself, and so it might choose paths, shortcut paths, to satisfaction, to fulfillment, that don't actually do the work of identifying, living, and giving your unique self-gifts. But once that's an invitation, once moving beyond ego, it's not only an invitation to participate in pure consciousness, it's an invitation to participate in the awakening to your unique self, then you can actually open people up in a whole different way, correctly, accurately, not manipulatively, correctly and accurately, right, to the great desire and yearning, right, to move beyond ego, to evolve beyond ego, to identify, right, with true self, right, to identify with essence, and then to enact, to awaken further, and to identify with, right, my awakened unique self, which lives and gives its gifts as part of a larger evolutionary context. So you begin to see that unique self and the democratization of enlightenment are inextricably linked. They work together. They're part of a larger cluster, right, which is part of, which is essential to the emergent world spirituality.